What happened to Dragon Ball Unreal? Well, let's start from the beginning. So, back in 2000, the early 2000s, uh, some guys in their mm, basements decided, hey, how about we how about we make a Dragon Ball mod for Half-Life? You know, the uh, yeah, the shooter. Uh, total conversion mod, you know, back, back in the day mods were actually very very popular. And so this they said, you know what? Yeah, we like Dragon Ball. Uh, let's do it. You know, what could go wrong by uh, you know making a, uh, a game based on or a mod based on copyright material so they did uh, and uh, actually they turned out pretty well the obviously the graphics weren't the best at the time and um, in 2004 they released a uh, another version of the mod called ESF 1.2.3 now this is the most popular version of this mod today uh, to me it is one of the most competitive uh, Dragon Ball experiences you can ever have or in any game for that matter because the gameplay involved you outmaneuvering your opponent and uh, hitting them so it basically mixed uh, FPS, so you needed a lot of aim, reflexes, and even fighting game, some fighting game mechanics. So it was a really, really fun mod. It still is to this day. Eventually, they decided they were gonna work on a final version, and the final version it looks like this. So yeah, it looks really, really good. However, devs, you know, have this something called uh, personal life, I guess. So they, they're still working on it to this day, I think. So the, the mod isn't finished. The, the baseline to this, what I mean is the mod is not finished even to this day. So this Imud guy, uh, he wanted to make a similar game. He wanted to make a Dragon Ball open world game. He was tired of waiting for these devs to finish their mod for Half-Life. Uh, so he wanted to make his own stuff. So he downloaded Unreal Engine and he started messing around. He created what you see on screen called Dragon Ball Unreal. It's uh, this um, tech demo, you know, there, by the, back in the day there were a lot of tech demos even for Mario and stuff. People took N64 models and put it on Unreal and obviously yeah, it looked good, but it was no game. There was no potential there. It was just to display the uh, power of the engine. This guy did the same, however, he made a lot of promises. He was gonna make a game, open world game, similar to ESF, but to RPG elements, blah, 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 you know, you named it, uh, this bro, over, you know, uh, meaningless, empty promises. But obviously, because Dragon Ball fans are dumb, they bought into it, and they only saw the potential this game had, because the dev said, you know what, uh, I'm gonna open up a Patreon, um, obviously you can donate to the Patreon, so you can support my YouTube channel, obviously not the, he couldn't officially say, they were supporting the development of uh, copyright material Dragon Ball. Uh, so they did, and this game was overhyped as hell, you know, Pungence, uh, you name it, all big YouTubers, a lot of big YouTubers were like, oh, this is the best looking game out there, how can fans literally one guy make a better looking game than a bandai it's incredible <laughs> it's 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 silly to say to even think about it. it's so hilarious that the, the, the guys didn't notice that he was using stuff made by bandai to make uh, it's just stupid it's an, it's an asset flip right it has no gameplay at one point he was on the uh, discord with the sf uh, developers and uh, surprisingly the sf developers actually supported him uh, said oh yeah good luck uh, to your project blah 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 until one day he actually tried to rip the sounds from uh, the one you know, one of the uh, esf's uh, videos he was called out uh, he denied it uh, obviously but uh, obviously the truth was out there at one time he even downloaded a voice uh, line from Jin from League of Legends to add to his Goku Black. It was so stupid. And at one point fans started to notice, you know, this is really not improving uh, above a tech demo. It still looks bad after all these years. Why don't you add somebody else to the project? He said, no, I'm gonna work alone, blah, 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 blah. So years have gone by and the game was not looking better. It actually, in fact, was looking worse because he replaced the assets for some reason. So people started asking questions uh, and stuff like that. He'd say, oh yeah, you know, you know, just I'm working on some stuff. Okay, it's gonna come. Um, don't worry, one day, one day. Eventually, he stopped posting altogether, no more updates, uh, nothing. He disappeared from social media. I heard he actually went to prison. Um, I can't, I'm not so sure about that, for unrelated reasons, of course. Uh, so, it just died out. So, the game was completely dead. Yeah, so you probably heard similar stories um, to this one 
for example, I can remember that MMO that was a scam, you know, that was Acid Fleep. It's happening right now with the day before. <laughs> Obviously, that game uh, uh, is turning out to be a scam. And it just goes to show, just goes to show that, uh, you know, real ma making games, uh, making good quality games takes time. You can't just make some assets, uh, have no real vision for it. Uh, you have to actually have a uh, talent and uh, dedication and uh, passion for uh, making video games. So it's not easy. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of games get, still get overhyped to oblivion. Uh, Math Chief's channel is a perfect example of uh, games that will never come out yet. He overhypes it for views. Uh, so the obviously the cycle continues and uh, people just um, end up investing in games with no substance and uh, losing their money. So that's the story of Dragon Ball Unreal and why you'll never hear from it again. <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for watching, uh, longer video than usual, but uh, hope you liked it anyway. Thank you very much, God bless you, have a lovely day.